Before we actually, before I show you what the core values are, I'd love for you to take a minute, talk to the people at your table, and this is the question I want you to answer, is when you think about covenant, what are some values that you pick up on? Okay, so what are some things that you're like, you know what, I feel like I noticed that covenant really cares about this, okay, or really prioritizes this, or maybe I just hear them talk about this, all right? So just take a minute, talk to the people at your table. What are some things that you hear or think that we prioritize? Okay. All right, well, all of those things, of course, um, are true. As we talk about, uh, this next slide is gonna actually show us um, what we have grouped as our three main core value, and we call, I, you know, we call them buckets. And the reason why we call them buckets is because there are actually six core values, all right? And we're gonna, we're gonna go through all six of those tonight. But um, the first two are gonna be grouped under worshipful living for Jesus. The second two are gonna be grouped under selfless living for others. And then the, the final two are gonna be purposeful living on mission, all right? And note, your workbook may be a little wonky compared to my slides tonight. And that's because I submitted the workbook a few months ago and then I changed everything. So, um, so sorry. But if you can, if you have any problems at the end of the night, I will help you fill in those gaps, all right? We'll talk about it. It's just not gonna be in an organized manner probably. All right, so, um, so let's get into the first one real quick. So worshipful living for Jesus. And the two, the two values in this category are passionate devotion and authentic relationships. I'm gonna take us to uh, Romans um, chapter 12, verses one through two, and read this for you guys. It says, therefore, I urge you, brothers and sisters, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice holy and pleasing to God. This is your true and proper worship. Do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is, his good, pleasing, and perfect will. And so what I love about what, um, what Paul is helping us understand here is that a lot of times when we hear the word worship, we think about like the first 25 minutes of church, right? The first 25 minutes are when we have music and you know, traditionally we've called that our time of worship. And so if we're singing or we're raising our hands or we're responding in some way, then that is what worship is. And what Paul is telling us here is that, that your true worship is to offer everything that you have as a sacrifice to the Lord, everything that you do. And I love that he specifically chooses the word bodies here, right? He doesn't say, offer your heart, your mind, your, he, he's gonna actually say bodies. And I think that's really important for us to pick up on because that means that everything we do, like we don't do things outside of our bodies, right? We, everything that we do is an act of worship, can be an act of worship to the Lord, that we would live a lifestyle that is full of worship. The cool thing about this is that when we talk about offering everything to the Lord, it doesn't just happen in church. All right, and here's what I would love for you to walk away with tonight, is that these are not just, I hope these aren't just covenants core values, but I hope that these are things that you want to live by and embody and do when you're not at church. Because the reality of it is, you may only be at church for an hour and a half each week. Some of you are here a lot more, but all the other time in your life, we want to be worshipful living for the Lord, that everything is done is an act of obedience to him. I have an author that I love who describes worshipful living as this saying, I'm going to church to worship God and I'm going to the grocery store to worship God and I'm going to my kid's soccer game to worship God and I'm going to the doctor's office to worship God. Is that while we're doing everything that we do in our lives, that we are entering into authentic relationship with people and we are demonstrating what Christ has done in us, all right? And so um, I, I have another um, little poem that I love here. Um, and it says, oh, he whom Jesus loved has truly spoken the holier worship which God designs to bless 
restores the lost and heals the, the spirit broken and feeds the widow and the fatherless. That everything that we do, and a lot of this happens outside of our church, y'all. A lot of this happens every single day with people that we encounter, with our neighbors, um, with, with people that maybe we, we're doing it alongside our church. But a lot of what worshipful living is, is it's living life worshipful to God, obedient to God. All right. So, um, so that is the first one. All right. Everybody good with that one? Okay. All right. We're going to go on to our next one here. Um, selfless living for others. All right. And the two, uh, two core values that really fall into this one is humble service and loving compassion. Humble service and loving compassion. To live selflessly means to put the needs of someone else before our own. And in doing this, we serve people in the name of Jesus and we are participating in the way of Jesus, all right? And it's one thing for us to say, put the needs of others in front of ourselves, right? But that's actually pretty hard. I mean, when my kid wants to take the last bite of dessert that I'm enjoying, I don't want to put, I don't want them to have that, right? That's just a tiny example of how everything that we can do is a life of humble service and loving compassion for others. All right, so let's look at our scripture text for this one. Um, I'm going to read John uh, 13, verse 1, and then 4 through 5. Um, it was just before the Passover feast. Jesus knew that the time had come for him to leave this world and go to the Father. Having loved his own who were in the world, he now showed them the full extent of his love. So he got up from the meal, took off his outer clothing, and wrapped a towel around his waist. After that, he poured water into a basin and began to wash his disciples' feet, drying them with a towel that was wrapped around him. And in Jesus' time, the washing of the feet would have been the role of the lowest servant, okay? The, the person of the lowest position would have been the one to wash the feet. And it was, you, you had to wash feet because they traveled barefoot or in sandals and roads were not paved. So feet were incredibly dirty. So this is a job, okay? This is not just like, oh, I'm going to go get a pedicure and stick my feet in a hot tub. This is a, this is a, a dirty job of washing people's feet. And um, so Jesus is going to take on this role of the lowest uh, servant, and he's going to get down. And he's actually saying two things I love about this, and I, I don't think it's highlighted on that one. Um, but it says that he shows them the full extent of his love the full extent of his love, is that when we are serving people, when we are humbling ourselves and we are loving them, is when we are showing the full extent of our love and putting that action uh, to our love. The other thing that I love about this is um, I think that when we are serving others is when we are the closest to Jesus. And he, he's about to go be with the Father. This is taking place um, very soon before Jesus is going to be crucified um, and buried and raised again. But he, he is near to the Father when he is saying, let me demonstrate to you how to serve and love one another, all right? So we believe that that is something um, that we want to do in every area of our lives. So here's my bucket and water. Nobody freaked out? Just kidding. I'm not washing your feet tonight, all right? Um, I have said that to someone before who just was like ready to bolt out the door. Like, do not come near my feet, all right? So I'm just kidding. We are not doing a foot washing tonight in part three of this class. But, um, but I do hope that you understand that this is not an exaggeration of serving. This is a, a very practical demonstration of what it looks like to meet a need of someone else out of humbling yourself and out of loving compassion. Um, so uh, here's what I, I want us to have a few minutes at our table to sit with this. Um, and here's a question that I want you to ask at your table. And this is going to take a few minutes of just like reflecting on this. And again, 
because I hope that these core values are not something that just stay here at our church. I hope that these are something that you as a member rooted and grounded here embody as you go out so that other people know Jesus. So let's just take a moment and how might you practically serve those around you, all right? Uh, if you wanna you know, do your kids, you can do that. If you wanna do a coworker, maybe it's someone at your job that you can practically serve, maybe it's a neighbor. Um, I have been asking this question and y'all, I've been making bread and this just started three weeks ago. You made bread for a long time. Um, so you're probably a pro, I'm an amateur, okay? Amateur bread maker and three weeks in. And, but on Sundays, I've been getting up early in the morning and prepping this bread all throughout the day and working on it and baking it in the evenings. And I'm making two loaves. And um, as I was doing this and praying for my family and preparing this bread for them, I thought, okay, and I'm not trying to over-spiritualize bread making, okay? But I was like, Lord, what do you want me to do with this? Because I don't cook, y'all. Like this is, I'm a terrible cook. I don't really bake well. For a bread to actually come out of the oven and taste delicious was a miracle from God. And so I'm like, what do you want me to do with this bread? And what I decided was that we were gonna eat on a loaf that night and the next day, and the next one was gonna get packaged up and get delivered to a neighbor that we were gonna pray for that week. And this kind of went along with our prayer walking that we've been doing here at Covenant and just praying for our neighbors. And so we were gonna deliver this bread and write a note and commit to praying for this family and, and do that. And um, so we dropped off the first loaf yesterday and I look like a ninja going through the yard because I realized the person was outside. You know, it ruins the surprise. Like if the person's in the yard when you're trying to like leave this pretty gift with a note and you know. And so I'm trying to like sneak through their yard and, and leave it there. and. Um, and I left our phone numbers inside and, um, and just got in the car and me and Sutton just prayed. We were like, Lord, would you do something with this bread? I don't, I mean, you know, it may not even taste good, but will you do something in this person's life to know that we just love them and wanna serve them? We just wanna do something for them this week. And, um, and so y'all, we got the sweetest phone call yesterday, like 10 minutes later, cause you know, he was out in the yard. And, um, and this person was like, you know, I have been in a really like a depressed place. I had foot surgery, things went really wrong. I haven't been able to maneuver and do things and leave the house and it's just been really bad and hard. And this was just like such a, such a thing from the Lord that, you know, that it just blessed me in such a huge way. And that I know for a fact, God wants to do those things every single day, all day, through all of us, okay? And all we have to start asking is, Lord, who, how might I practically serve? Or, or here's what I have, what can I do with this? Will you just, will you put someone on my heart, someone on my mind? How can I practically love and serve someone around me? All right, so I want you to take a few minutes at your table and do that. If you have no ideas, you can be like, oh, I'm gonna start making bread and da, da, da. Um, but, um, but just think about it because you might know, and it might be that, hey, you have a, a neighbor who her trash can stays out for a long time, you know? Y'all, um, our family, like we're two capable young people and we can't roll our trash can in for days. I'm like, I don't know what's wrong with us. But a neighbor comes over and rolls our trash can in for us and we're like, thank you so much. That was such a huge blessing. Um, so take a moment and just brainstorm, all right? Let's look at two more passages of scripture that I think are really important with this core value. Mark 12, 29 through 30, um, Jesus is going to say, the most important one, answered Jesus, is this. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. The second is this, love your neighbor as yourself. There is no commandment greater than these, all right? And so um, this is something that we try to say in our family all the time. And um, for a long time, for a long season, I felt like we kind of stopped right here, you know, with just the, yeah, let me, let me love the Lord with all my heart and strength and soul and mind. Um, because this one is a lot harder, right? It's, well, to put in action, let me just say that. 
Um, and so, um, but I think that that is, um, that's what we're talking about with this core value. One more that we're gonna look at. Uh, 1 John 3, uh, 11, and then 16 through 18. Uh, and we're in 1 John right now, so this is kind of cool. We're in this um, series. For this is the message that you heard from the beginning, that we should love one another. This is how we know what love is. Jesus Christ laid down his life for us, and we ought to lay down our lives for our brothers. If anyone has material possessions and sees his brother in need but has no pity on him, how can the love of God be in him? Dear children, let us not love with words or tongue, but with actions and in truth. All right? Okay, let's go to, we are moving right along. Oh, one thing that is not in your notes, but I wish that I had to put it in your notes because it's so important that I, last thing on this is remember that when we are serving people, we are remembering what God has done for us and we are demonstrating what God has done for them. We're remembering what God has done for us and we're demonstrating what God has done for them, all right? Now, yes, the magnitude of what God has done for them, we will never come close to, but when we have these, these simple acts of just selfless um, service and love, then we are showing them just a small glimpse of the love and the sacrifice that Jesus has made for them, all right? Um, and so, Enough on that one, but that one's one of my favorite ones. I feel like I could talk about it all the time. All right. Branson mentioned this in a sermon not too long ago, and I ended up putting in my margin on the, um, the notes page, I was like, ooh, we want to talk about that in this class because um, I think that these fit so nicely with our core values. Um, what we want for Covenant Church is that we want to be a place where restoration happens all the time. We want to be a place where people walk with each other through the heaviness of life. And we want to be a place where we are known for our selfless love for others. And with those three statements, I want to spend, um, I want you to spend just a few more minutes at your table. Um, and I know that what I'm asking of you, like, may seem really silly and random, but if you'll just go with me, I'm going to tell you at the end of it why we did it. All right? So just, um, just entertain me for a few minutes and, and go along with these question prompts and then we're gonna come back to, to this slide and why we did it, all right? So here's what I want you to do at your table is choose one question to answer and this doesn't have to be like your whole table picks one. Each person, you can just look at these four questions and you pick one of those to answer, okay? So either what is something that you hope to grow out of, all right? Um, what is God teaching you right now? What is your favorite childhood memory? And then how would you describe the past week in one word? All right, now keep in mind your time. Okay, so if your favorite childhood memory requires you to tell a 20 minute story, I would love to hear it at some point, but tonight at the table is probably not that opportunity. All right, so keep in, keep in mind, um, just take a minute to share each one of you um, so here's your four questions. Take a second and pick one. And I'll, I'm gonna go first. This is always the one I do. What's something I hope to grow out of is snoozing my alarm. Hope to grow out of that at some point in my life. All right? All right, so take, a, take just a few minutes, pick one of those and share it with your table. <laughs> this next core value that we're gonna talk about is, is gonna be um, purposeful living on mission and a part of it is going to be ministering together, all right? And as a body of believers, as the saints that are being equipped to go out in, out of the church and to minister together, we have to talk to each other. We have to have relationships with each other, right? We have to build one another up. And then we have to be ready to talk to other people outside of the church, all right? And if you're like, oh, I just hate talking to people. I don't wanna be at a table with random questions and all of these things. I know, okay, it's, it can be really hard. But a part of the only way that we're going to minister together, especially at a larger church, is to be committed to sitting around at tables with one another, to being committed to asking the questions and working through. I heard a few answers that were like, hey, I just so appreciate you said that because it was more vulnerable, right? Like it was something that 
you know, if we could have an hour long conversation about it, we probably would, right? And um, if we are gonna be able to, um, to really meet people where they are, we're gonna have to be willing to share with them what's going on in our lives and what the Lord is doing in our lives, all right? And so ministering together. Um, so as a part of living, here we go, purposeful living on, minis- on, on mission. So ministering together and equipping others. Um, y'all, are, y'all are finding the blanks, right? It's not too, not too bad? Okay, good. All right, so um, let me give you a second to write that and then I'll keep talking. Do. Yep. All right, so a part of living purposefully, as a part of living purposefully, we have been called to what? Called to be disciples of Christ who make disciples, all right? So when we talk about living life on mission, purposefully ministering together, equipping people, we are talking about living as disciples of Christ and making disciples, all right? So I've got a few um, passages of scripture here for us to look at. I I love this um, because, well, let's read it together. You're gonna love it too. Everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. How then can they call on the one they have not believed in? And how can they believe in the one of whom they have not heard? And how can they hear without someone preaching to them? And how can anyone preach unless they are sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of those who bring good news. But not all the Israelites accepted the good news. For Isaiah says, Lord, who has believed our message? Consequently, faith comes from hearing the message, and the message is heard through the word about Christ. Now, the how beautiful are the feet of those who bring good news. Um, Hobby Lobby has put it on a, um, you know, on a wooden frame, and it's been sold and passed out everywhere. But I love these questions. It's like, hey, how are they supposed to know unless they've been told? How are they supposed to believe unless they see it? And the thing is, is that, y'all, when I, my favorite definition of evangelism is that evangelism is us catching up to a conversation that God has, is already having with someone, okay? God is already having conversations with every single person that he has created. He is, he is always wanting to draw each and every person to himself. And what he's asking us to do is just to preach the word and he's going to do the work, that we can believe through the power of the Holy Spirit, through the power of the gospel, through the power of the word, that if we will show up and we will just share, as uncomfortable as we may be, as weird as it may be, as uh, messed up as it may be, if we will show up and share, then the Lord will be able to minister through us, all right? Uh, One more here, and you know, you might could have guessed this one if you're familiar with um, the Great Commission. Couldn't leave that one out. So um, this is at the end of the book of Matthew, and Jesus has died on the cross. He has been buried. He is raised to life, and he has spent time with his disciples. And he gives them this final commission, and he says, it says, Then the eleven disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain where Jesus had told them to go. When they saw him, they worshiped him, but some doubted. Then Jesus came to them and said, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything that I have commanded you. And surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. All right? This is... This is for us. This was, not, this was not just for a group of people. This is for us that God has asked us to be disciples who go and make disciples, all right? And the only way that we're gonna do that is to have relationships with other people, okay? And so it is so, so important. Now this, I am with you always to the very end of the age that Jesus did not leave the ministry to be unattended, right? So he's giving the gift of the Holy Spirit that for those who have professed their faith and they have received um, salvation in Christ, that we have been given 
the Holy Spirit, God himself in us to equip us and send us out to do this. And I just want to go over um, this really quick because I, I love this. Five promises in scripture about the person of the Holy Spirit, okay? Number one, believers are never alone because the Spirit lives inside of them, all right? Believers are never alone with the Holy Spirit. The second one is that the Holy Spirit will lead you in all truth, that he will lead you in truth. The third, the Spirit will give you power, love, and self-discipline. The fact that the Holy Spirit gives me love is one of the best things to me. Do you know that that means that people that are hard to love, we still are capable of loving them, all right? Um, and, and, and that is me sometimes as well, right? That's demonstrated on me. Um, a spirit of resurrection, all right, new life. And then through the spirit, you receive power and authority power and authority. We are not a church where we just want you to come to church and to sit and enjoy and then go home and go back to life, all right? Go back to everyday life. We want you to come, be ministered with, alongside other believers, be equipped with, and we want you to go out in the power of the Holy Spirit and use the authority that you have been given as a disciple of Christ. All right, that's what it means to live life on mission with a purposeful mission. And y'all, it's so good, right? Because if, if what life was about was getting up and going to work and doing X, Y, and Z, um, then man, it would just be kind of, um, what would it be for, you know? But the fact that we have a, we have a purposeful mission that we can fulfill in any place that God has put us in right now. Maybe that's discipling your children, if you're in the home with them, raising them up to go out and to do this. Maybe that's your workplace. Um, maybe you're doing a group, I don't know. Um, the, the possibilities are endless there. And this word disciple um, here, uh, the translation for that word disciple is learner, a learner that I'm just going to continue to grow in my knowledge and my love of God and therefore grow in my love for other people, all right? Um, so here at Covenant, oh, another part of this, the equipping part, is that here at Covenant, we um, as a staff do not want to be the ones doing the ministry, right? Like that, that is sometimes what we think about uh, well, there's people on staff at a church that they should be the ones that are doing this ministry, and I will attend and do these other things, all right? Whereas what we actually believe and view when it comes to equipping others is that our job as a church staff is to equip you to do the ministry, all right? And, our, and then your job is to what? Equip someone else to do the ministry, this replication effect. And so when it comes to like something new that we're really trying to work on is when it comes to um, providing pastoral care to people. Uh, in a church of 2,500, someone is always sick, having surgery, going through something really difficult, um, dealing with all sorts of things, right? And so a group of six of us on staff could try to be everything that we needed to, everything that person needed to be, or what we could do is we could equip the body of believers to come alongside one another and help one another, all right? And ways that we do that, y'all, there are ways that you've been helped some, at some point. Someone bringing you a meal, someone just taking you out for coffee, someone asking, how can I pray for you and your family? Um, how can I, um, prayer walking someone's home, I have a, a lady in our church who, if I'm going through something hard that week, man, she doesn't even text anymore. She just pulls up in my driveway, gets out, and starts walking around my house in prayer. And I'm like, oh, praise the Lord. I needed that, right? Like, I needed that to happen. Um, and it, uh, it, that's a different story. I was about to go off into a story, but um, stay focused, Jordan, stay focused. Um, but these ways that we are gonna, that we can come alongside one another to do the ministry. I said this to someone the other day and I said, hey, you are doing such a great job at caring pastorally for somebody. 
And they were like, what? Don't call me a pastor, that is whoa. And I'm like, look, I'm not calling you a pastor, but what I'm telling you is that you, along with all of us who have the heart of Jesus in us, can care and walk alongside people who are going through difficult things, all right? That's the church we wanna be. The staff are not the ones doing that work. We are helping to equip you in order to go out to do that ministry and to minister together with other people, all right? And so just as we saw Jesus send out his disciples in those pairs to go out and to do that work, that is what we want to be all about here at Covenant. Um, and we have the Holy Spirit empowering us to do that, all right? Okay, oh, it's 721, that was pretty fast. All right, um, I will pray over you guys before we leave. I don't necessarily have anything else with our core values, but um, this is the last class. So real quick, let me go over the end of the process for you. And then if you have any questions about what we've learned, um, then we will answer through those. Does everyone get the blanks or do I need to go through? Everybody fill those in? that wanted to? Okay. Um, it's probably um, passionate devotion and authentic relationships. Yeah. All right, so you have taken all three of your membership classes at this point. So you're gonna get an email probably tomorrow and it's gonna have links for you to finish your profile form uh, and so that's that form that just has like, tell us your name, your address, your phone number, all those things and about your children and your this and your that, okay? Um, that's your profile form. <clears throat> Why do we ask for all of that is because we have a database, an online database here at the church and we put that information in there and it's really helpful for us because if you call us and something's going on or, or we need to get to your house, then we just have your address and we're gonna go and we're gonna do that. And we, if we need you or we wanna invite you into something or, or connect you with somebody, we've got your phone number and your email to be able to do that. Um, and we wanna know your kids' names. We wanna know how old they are. We wanna be a part of, of your family. Um, so do that. The next thing you have is going to be your spiritual journey form, all right? And that is simply for us to know where you are um, on your spiritual journey. And there's a particular place on there where we would love for you to tell us, um, you know, what did it look like for you to surrender your life to Jesus for him to be your savior and Lord, all right? And so, um, so take some time just to answer those questions for us. If you're, if you're working through that document and you're like, I don't know. I don't know that I've done that, or I was a kid and I don't remember what I did, or I don't know where I am with all any of this. Um, don't just ghost the, the process, all right? We've had people just run away from the form and, and, um, and, be, and, and we don't want that, all right? Um, just let us know if you'll send an email to care at covenant.cc or, or reach out to Joe. You've got his contact info um, to meet with him or meet with me. We'd love to just sit down one-on-one -on -one and talk through any of those questions that you might have. Um, and then at some part in it, you're gonna just be able to select what's the next step for you in your faith. And the reason why we're asking that is not to judge or require or anything like that. We just wanna know how we can come alongside you. We know of a lot of ministry uh, things happening here at Covenant that if you want to grow in a particular area, then we want to offer you the opportunity that maybe there's a group coming up on that or maybe there's a ministry area that you don't know about. So, um, so get those done. And then the third step is you're going to register for your membership vows, all right? And so that's gonna be, um, there's dates that are there for you to be able to choose from. We've got one coming up um, end of June, 30th, yeah. Um, so if you want to do that, just to go ahead and um, get the very last step done, then you can do that. Why do we have you come on stage? Because we have people all the time that are like, oh, do I have to walk up there on stage? That seems like the worst thing in the world, all right? And here's why, is because we, you, are, you are publicly committing to that body of believers that you are coming alongside them on this, this mission, all right, to be a part of this. You don't have to say anything, so you're not having to give some kind of address or make a verbal commitment of any kind, all right? You're just gonna stand there and Branson or Joe or myself, whoever it is, is gonna call out your name and you're gonna give a little wave and introduce yourself and then you'll be off and you're not alone. You're with your people. See, we just talked about 
our childhood memories and, and what we need to grow out of and all these things. These are the people you're standing next to, all right? The people that you have met and gotten to know over the past few weeks, okay? And then um, if you are transferring your membership from another church, that will be, we will pick that up in your profile form and we will handle that process for you, all right?